Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the Garden of Patagonia, just outside Via La Angostura. It's the Patagonia racetrack that hosts the MXGP of Patagonia, Argentina, the opening round of the FIM Motocross World Championship 2018. So far, this uh, part of the world has hosted quite a few Grand Prix, but the... Uh, the big story here is that uh, the defending world champion, Tony Cairoli, has never won in Argentina. Is he going to be standing on the top step of the podium today? Or will it be uh, somebody like Jeffrey Hurlings, who has won previously in MX2? The last two wins here in MXGP have come from Tim Geiser on the Honda, but of course uh, no Tim Geiser racing here this weekend, no HRC representation due to both riders being out injured. But this uh, racetrack here, the racetrack of Patagonia, it's 22 degrees now, so starting to cool down here. It's been warmer than we've had in previous years because uh, we're about three or four weeks ahead of schedule. Uh, it's the opening round, we're still in summer. Normally we come here and we're already in the autumn, and uh, but... We've had a, a big rainstorm last night, hasn't affected the track any. 1,550 metres long is this racetrack, and if you're joining us for the first time, you didn't watch the first MXGP race. Look at that, be beautiful. And uh, this is where we are, we really have been spoilt, but uh, the holiday is well and truly over as these guys go to work for a second time. Uh, MXGP race one highlights coming up in just a moment. Adam Wheeler joins me in a moment. We'll get through the highlights and we'll hear from Adam ahead of uh, the start of MXGP. Tony Cairoli got a, a good jump from the inside, came across his nearest rivals, and he stole the first Fox hole shot of the year. Jeffrey Hurlings didn't make the best start, but he was in there in around about the fifth position. He went round Paul and through turn two. Julian Lieber on the 33 Kawasaki made a, an impressive start as he uh, jostled up front. He was in second position in the early stages of the race, just behind... Uh, his teammate, but uh, it wasn't long before everybody else started to come through. Lack of racing, fitness. There was Paul Ann getting muscled out of the way by Jeffrey Hurlings as he charged his way through the pack. But then when the race started to settle down, DeSalle found his way in front of uh, Paul Ann as he started to carve his way through the field. DeSalle wasn't done either. With uh, his teammate, Julian Lieber, he made that move to get himself into fourth. But up front, it was Kai Rowley leading the way. Fevre was in second initially, but Jeffrey Hurlings found his way past the Frenchman to get himself into second. The Yamaha riders giving chase. Sean Simpson had an up-and-down ride, started in eighth, and eventually faded down to 14th. A mistake along the way. Eventually came back to 11th, not the race that the Scott would have wanted on that Wilvo Yamaha, but a strong performance from Evgeny, Evgeny Bobrashev early on. It was as high as 12th on that new boss project machine, riding a Suzuki. Eventually faded to 14th, though. Simpson came in in 11th place. Tony Kai Rowley, second half of the race, started getting caught by Jeffrey Hurlings. And the two then were less than two seconds apart and put on a great show for the fans. So too did these two. Fevre was in third with the Sal on that green Kawasaki bearing down on him. And on lap 14 of 19, thought he'd found his way through. Fevre responded, and so too did the Belgian once more. It wasn't done either. Those two jostled for position once again. But it was eventually DeSalle who came out on top in third ahead of the Monster Energy Yamaha of Fevre. Jeremy Van Horbeek, Fevre's teammate, came home in fifth. But this was how close it was going into the final couple of corners. Kai Rowley had his work cut out. Jeffrey Hurlings got held up by back markers on the previous lap. And it was Kai Rowley who won by just over a second from Jeffrey Hurlings. DeSalle was third. Well, that was the a quick look at what happened in MXGP race one. Lisa Leyland caught up with a couple of riders down on the grid. One of those was the Asimota Red Motor uh, Honda rider As uh, Alminas Jasikonis. But before that, Roman Fevre, Monster Energy Yamaha, who uh, came home in uh, fourth. OK, joining me on the start grid of the second MXGP race of the day is Roman Fevre. Quite a solid first moto for him. I just want to chat with him and see how it went. Roman, tell us about that first moto. Pretty close between you and Dassar. Yeah, uh, yeah, I had a good start. I was second, and then uh, um, yeah, I was looking carefully uh, first few laps, and then um, yeah, just like missed uh, the rhythm a little bit, and then on the wave section, I was uh, really, really bad. Let's say I had some bad lines, and I tried to change my lines, but uh, it was a bit difficult. So uh, uh, yeah, I dropped back to four, and then I was uh, battling with the sal at the end, but uh, yeah. Really happy about uh, the first moto. Uh, you know, it's good to start the season uh, like this with four place and uh, 
the, the, the best uh, need to come. And how much energy did you manage to save for this second race? Is it going to be quite a tough one for you? Yeah, it's okay. It's not bad. Uh, the track it's not demanding so much. Um, we we got a lot of big jumps, so we can let's say breathe in the air. It's 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 not it's not really tough track. Uh, you just need to be concentrated and have a good line, and that's the the main uh, things. Have a good second moto. Thanks, Roman. Okay. I'd like to grab a few words with Arminas uh, Jasikonas. So I'm going to need my uh, step ladder so I can reach you. Arminas, tell us about that first moto. Um, it was quite an eventful one for you, wasn't it? Well, uh, it's hard to come back with injuries and being sick last week and everything, it comes up. A little struggling still a little bit with the bike, but we're making step by step everything. So it's hard hit for me to be there, but uh, we're making step by step front. And for next GPs, I think I'm going to make uh, good steps front. I mean, you said it's hard to come back from injury and you're, sh you're struggling a little bit with the bike. Just tell us, new team, new bike, how has that transition been? How was your winter training? Well, for me, it came everything in one place, in yeah. injury and bike. We couldn't test uh, enough bike as I came quite late in the season and everything came so late, so it was a big hit. But uh, we're trying to make best out of it. The season is long and we will we'll just try to be fit in the end of the season to be on top. Quite a last minute signing, wasn't it? Yeah, sure. That, that's a thing fell off uh, everything was so sad but yeah you gotta move on and uh, I hope it's gonna be only better for me hope you have a better second moto thank you good luck to our minister it's time for MHGP race two so the fans wait with bated breath at the start of MXGP race two Adam Wheeler on trackoffroad.com joins me for the uh, second MXGP race what did you make of race one Bated breath is a good phrase, actually, Paul. I mean, I think the, the finale of that race was pretty sensational, wasn't it? I yeah. mean, it's been the talk pretty much since the end of 2017 about, you know, the Red Bull KTM duel for the title this year. And we've seen a little bit of a preview or a taste of it, haven't we? With, uh, you know, Tony Cairo taking a, a very confident pole position yesterday, leading, leading the race from the whole shot today. But then Jeffrey Hurlings just eating into that lead. I think that's going to almost be a little bit of a pattern of the season. Mm. Of course, there's going to be weekends where Jeffrey's the fastest rider and he'll be setting the pace. But Cairo has the superior experience, especially in this class and on that bike. So so it's, uh, it's, it's kind of like a fascinating dynamic, really. And then, you know, there's other implications, like what can Roman Febre do to up his game? And Clement de Salle was in third position. Can he get close to them? There's, there's such a, a fantastic cast of characters in this class. Um, and that's one of the best things about this first Grand Prix of the year is that, you know, even though someone like Tony Cairoli is so authoritative, it's uh, anything can happen. Well, we're just moments away from the start of MXGP Race 2. Hopefully it's a good one. Jeremy Van Horbeek then takes his place behind the steels here at the MXGP of Patagonia, Argentina, as he prepares for MXGP Race 2. Tony Cairoli, Jeffrey Hurlings, they were dominant in MXGP Race 1. Adam Wheeler from On Track Off Road with me, and uh, we say dominant, Adam. Clement de Salle was third, 30 seconds behind the two Red Bull KTMs with uh, Roman Fevre uh, two seconds further back and Jeremy Van Horbeek two seconds further back of his teammate. So... There's a lot of work for some guys to do out there, yeah, at the including moment, this one. Yeah, at the moment there's two two tiers, isn't there? Yeah. It's, uh, you know, the, the KTMs and, and the best of the rest. Uh, the Sal won that battle in the first moto. Uh, look, we just saw Jeremy Van Horbeek, like we mentioned a moment ago. I've been impressed with him this weekend, Paul. He's been very consistent, very kind of quiet, not taking too many risks, but just been fast enough to be consistently always in that top five. Sean Simpson as well. Didn't have a great end of 2017 coming back from injury, but, you know, right from the first practice session has been on it. And we've got to be careful not to overlook Jeremy Siwa, rookie rider in the class. He's only ever ridden Suzuki right from day one on the, the mini bikes. Uh, new rider, new bike, new team with that Wilbo Yamaha setup. Came home in seventh, which was impressive. He started in tenth, but uh, you know, a, a good solid ride for him and, and one I'm sure he'll be pleased with. Yeah, and Julian Lieber as well, the other rookie in the class. Uh, two quite short riders, but really using the power and the, and, and the torque of those 450s out of the gate to make good starts. And you know, that's half the battle if you talk to any of the riders these days. Well, the 15-second board has gone up. Ingo Parch, our FIM race director, making sure it goes up on time. It switches to five. Over on the right-hand side, as we look at it, Tony Cairoli, will he be pulling another fox hole shot? He doesn't want to give any advantage to Jeffrey Hurlings, who's up out of the seat early and charging into that turn. He gets ran wide as Hurlings gets bounced off. Of, oh, and that's Anstey going down. And, uh, well, there's three guys in there. Jeffrey Hurlings, very lucky not to go down there, but it was Tony Cairoli that's leading at the moment, but... Was that a foxhole shot? De Salle with him. Is that Van Horvick with him or Fevre? 
One of the two Yamahas, I think, by the body language Svebra. there. Oh, That's no, uh, Van Horbeek. Yep. Yeah, and then Fevra just behind him. And then Siwa, or Simpson, actually. Simpson. Simpson. And then Hurling's at the inside at the 24. Colden off as well, I think, the other KTM. So uh, a lot of KTMs and Yamahas in there, and there's just a lone Kawasaki figure of 25. Clement de Salle, Jeffrey Hurling's not clean on the exit into the waves. So that would have cost him just a little bit, but it is Kai Rowley to Salle, Van Horbeek, Fevra. Uh, Simpson, uh, sorry, Hurlings, then Paul Simpson, Land. then Paulan, and then Colton off around the outside. And then who was that? Strybos on the standing construct. KTM was right there as well. So too Evgeny Bobashev, Alex Lapino, Jeremy Siwa, and Ivo Monticelli. Jassi Konis in about 14th position. And then we've got Nagel and uh, one of the locals, Jetro Salazar, is in there. And just inside the points, Tano Leop and Jose Boutron. British champion as well. Another rookie in the class down in 20th place. That's uh, Gray and uh, Irwin as well, Paul. Just trying to learn the ins and outs of MXGP at his first attempt here. And uh, just uh, just look at Hurlings, 84. He's got the inside line here. If he charges down, yeah, he will. He'll muscle aside the Yamaha and then cut to the inside to defend. No, he goes to the outside. Surprising. He hands that move right back. So uh, Fevra handed a gift there from uh, Jeffrey Hurlings because it looked like he got pushed wide and then he was able to capitalise in the next turn. Just like the first moto, Tony Cairoli already building a lead ahead of Jeffrey Hurlings, who's just trying to find some sort of space position, trying to gather what's going on here, Paul, in the first stages of the race. Yeah, it was two seconds over DeSalle already at the end of that lap. But uh, Van Horbeek on the Yamaha third, his teammate right behind him, riding shotgun in fourth, trying to thwart the uh, attentions of Jeffrey Hurlings, who's in fifth place. Then the other uh, Yamaha, uh, the Wilbo mounted machine of uh, Sean Simpson. Then Paul Ann, and I think, you know, that the uh, Tommy Searle and Max Anstey were two of those guys caught up in that first turn crash. Hopefully we'll get a replay in just a moment, but uh, certainly no Anstey. And uh, Max Anstey, where was he in the, uh, the first race? Uh, he was standing 12th position in what was an up and down moto for him. Right, here's a replay of the start. Back so, of the pack here. So in the middle on that green Kawasaki. Yeah, and just took out, uh, got took out there, didn't he? Just ran into the back of uh, Lieber. 33. Yep, 33, yep. So two factory bikes down there in the first corner, Paul. So Cairoli leading the way then. Desal is still in second position. Van Horvick, there he is. The first of the two blue Monster Energy Yamahas, followed by his teammate. Then Jeffrey Hurlings, 84. As he came over the line, he was already 3.7 seconds behind Tony Cairoli. That's already a big ask, especially the kind of form that we've seen from Cairoli in the last year or so. Well, we've been talking about the new KTM, so two Monster Energy Yamahas. Don't forget, they're the, they're the factory versions of the 2018 YZ450Fs as well, Paul. I think, yeah, I think DeSalle's made uh, I think Cairoli made a mistake on this lap because DeSalle was two seconds behind Cairoli. Roley as they came over the line. Watch as it go in the opposite direction. That's not a two second gap. Or it certainly wasn't when they hit that long back straight coming towards it. It's about a second, a second and a half, a 45, four, four, uh, yeah, look, 45, uh, one. So 1.7 seconds the gap. Fastest lap of the race. DeSalle on that Kawasaki. The two Yamahas right there. This could be a juicy one, Adam Wheeler. People who don't usually tune in to watch motocross, just keep an eye on the suspension of the bikes, Paul, because you can really see some of the, the sort of the tracking bumps, the braking bumps. The track is actually a lot rougher than you can see it on the screen. Um, some of the riders saying trying to spot the holes and, and the softer parts and the harder parts is one of the, the most difficult aspects of this racetrack. Especially because they go from light to shade. So now we're in, a, in the shaded part, you don't see anything there, then a little bit of a mix here, you're out in brilliant sunshine here. But then you watch when they get to the end of the wave section, those trees cast a shadow look. And uh, that was part of the problem yesterday. They were starting to get some ruts and lips on the, uh, the face of those waves that were catching out with one or two riders. But because it's a lot quicker now, uh, that's obviously not the case. But Hurlings look at the square off. Oh, and uh, oh. Fevra lost the front the and bubble. somehow stayed up. But that was enough for Hurlings, who had already chose to go around the outside of the Frenchman to uh, pick a pass and make it stick. So the KTM split, uh, splits the two Yamahas here with 25 and a half minutes to go. And we're on our second lap in this second MXGP race. Cairoli in a hurry, so too is his teammate, but uh, a good solid start from Clement de Salle at the moment. He has the fastest lap of the race on that opening lap. Hurling's, Hurling's always liking that wide line. I was watching him around there in the first motor there, Paul. I mean, just carries that higher corner speed. I mean, as we know, he's probably the, one of the best riders in the sand in the world. So in those kind of like slightly softer, bumpier things, you can see him on the pegs leaning towards the back of the bike, really just trying to get the speed, carry the speed. I mean, realistically, he's got to be looking at Tony Cairoli here. Uh, you know, Jeremy Van Horbeek and Clement de Sound, not easy riders to pass, but Hurling just knows that that Grand Prix win is escaping from him. 
1.8 seconds a gap between Cairoli and Desal as they hit the line for a second time. They are your first two disappearing through that second turn. Then we've got the Monster Energy Yamaha of Jeremy Van Horvick and then the Red Bull KTM of 84. Jeffrey Herlings in four. Fevre is fifth. Paul and six. Siwa seven. Simpson eight. Golden off nine. Nagel ten. Bobrachev is 11th. Lupino in 12th place. Then we have Monticelli on the Eiffel Eye JK Racing Yamaha in 13th. The uh, Red Motor Honda of uh, Jassikonis is next. But where is 19? Just have we lost Fevre? No. no, he's just there behind. Watch this section here, Paul. Like we were saying earlier, the, the MX2. This is one of the key sections of the track. Herlins likes to, in the first mode, he was cutting wide and then just doubling his way through and carried a lot more speed into that sort of steep jump that just seems to cut off the speed before the riders then turn right. So it's um, getting that section right is imperative. It's Jeremy Siwa. Up a Jeremy Siwa! Oh. Ouch! Big crash, big high side for the Swiss rider. That is similar to what happened to Paul Jonas. Uh, the first one of the first times we came here um, when he did the same thing but it was a little bit earlier in the turn so massive high side just goes to show how unpredictable the ground is here Adam Wheeler the Wilvo Yamaha rider had a great opening moto finishing seventh uh, in this MXGP class just obviously asking a little bit too much of the back end through that particular part of the racetrack broke traction it's high sided him and uh, ugly because he was on the upslope of that uh, exit of the turn well you can see he was trying to hold on to it there and the bike just popped him up I think that secondary impact then just like launched him Fevre not letting her Hurlings off the hook best lap by Cairoli on that one a 143.7 and that gap that you said was uh, over almost two seconds a minute ago is now nearly three Paul Whoa, look at uh, Fevre just trying to get those elbows out said there'd be a little bit of argy bargy Adam in the studio <laughs> show <laughs> might see a little bit more of it here in the second MXGP race what was the fastest lap in race one 142.4 so we're still a little bit off that but the track is considerably rougher now let's have a look again when they come around to this way so the section of the track we were talking about a moment ago Roman Febra said in his pre-grid interview that that was one area of the track where he was particularly bad at in the first motor and it was one area where Hurlings was particularly good so let's see if he can try and make some sort of difference here or maybe Febra might have figured it out he's going inside Hurlings is going for that middle line yeah the outside you do get good drive and uh, you see it there look Maintains that position, Jeffrey Hurlings. There's some gnarly braking bumps on the downside there. We saw, was it Thomas Kier? Oh, I'll tell you what, that was uh, Paul Ann almost coming to grief in the background. Oh! As uh, Hurlings saying, you know what, you're not coming back past me. So uh, a sign that Hurlings not rattled, not on the ropes, but just not able to settle into his own routine at the moment. Because while he's got the dogged uh, Roman Fevre just breathing down his neck and making him think outside the box, it's allowing uh, Van Horvick to get away ever so slightly. So uh, Hurlings will be frustrated at the moment. And Fevre as well, just inches away from the top of that kind of burn bank there. From That's quite going high into the off board. the side of there as well. Van Horbeek again, as said, has been impressive this weekend and showing he's just been solid, Paul. It's this typical Van Horbeek, really. He'll ride to that sort of 90, 95% of his speed and ability and he'll hold it there. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's good enough for a second, third place. Other times, you know, we'll see him in fifth or sixth. Yeah, I know that uh, Jeremy, uh, Jeremy Van Horbeek is, uh, you know, with this particular race, you know, as, as nice as the area and as beautifully, uh, you know, crafted that this racetrack is, there is well, Commander oh. Sal's putting together Go two solid line, motos. He split the two KTMs now. Uh, I guess a podium is realistic for you guys now. Yeah, the, the, the race is not finished, yeah. but uh, yeah, at the moment he has good uh, rhythm. He's strong on the bike, so hopefully we see him on the podium later, I hope. And how's his winter training been? What feedback have you got from him over the winter? Yeah, he's really happy with the 450 Kawasaki. Uh, good training, no injury this winter, so that's that's very really important. So, no, that's good. He's happy. He's feeling good. Good luck for the rest of the motor. Thanks, Thanks Francois. So back to the racing then, and uh, Roman Fevre just a little bit untidy through those waves. But uh, we were just talking about that a moment ago, uh, Adam. That um, you know certain parts of the racetrack. Uh, playing into the hands, but Jeffrey Hurling seems to have broken free from Roman Fevre at the moment, and he's able to settle down. But Jeff, uh, Jeremy Van Horbeek, uh, the nature of this racetrack, it's high speed, there's a lot of square edge bumps, you know, and oh, a little bit lucky there for Jeffrey Hurlings. And uh, as we saw with Jeff, uh, with Jeremy Siwa, uh, that split second can change everything. And, and Jeremy Van Horbeek, who's had an impressive winter training, he's looking forward to the season, is, is in very, very good shape. I think he just wants to get out of here and he's looking forward to going to Valkenswaard in the, the first of those European rounds. And if he does stay where he is, he's going to be fourth overall in the World Championship.
Jeffrey Hurlings splitting the two Monster Energy Yamahas still. But uh, what do you make to uh, Van Horvick's performance so far, Adam Wheeler? I think Jeremy's one of those riders where in the past has put himself under pressure to perform. I mean, 2015 was a pretty bad year after finishing runner-up in 2014. Since then, he's, he's kind of, you know, always been there or thereabouts. You know, he's talked of winning, but then the last win was in 2014. So it's been some time. I think he'll be greatly encouraged from this start, Paul, because it's the sort of thing that he needs. He needs to build up a little bit of a run of results, a couple of podiums. Um, he's been he suffered with a concussion, I think, in 2016. So there were always little things that interrupted him. So Van Horbeek, I think, you know, wasn't a rider we were talking about much pre-season, but he's actually, you know, someone we can't discount because he seems to have found a groove again on that Yamaha. I'm just wondering whether uh, Jeffrey Hurling was shaking out the left arm again there as he came into land over the, the last of those jumps a moment ago. If that's the case, that's an early time to be getting uh, arm pump. He had it in the qualifying race yesterday and it got the better of him. So, um, I don't know, he's just not relaxed. He's obviously, that's one of the things that creates arm pump can be things like handlebar position or, you know, conditions or going too fast too soon. And obviously these guys in a race have no choice but to go fast. But uh, you can do it in a more controlled manner, you know, get to the front and then control it. So you, you're, you're manning the pace. But when you're in a battle, you've got no choice. And we've seen that... Uh, Hurlings was in that battle with uh, Roman Febra a couple of laps ago and having to you know, ride over himself a little bit just to ride defensive. I'm, I mean, we're talking about a 23-year-old former three times world champion, the most successful rider ever from, from the Netherlands. I mean, he's, he's not going to be stressing, is he, no, no, by no. not being able to catch Tony Cairoli, for example. No, but I was talking to Dirk Grubel this morning after practice, uh, before practice and asked uh, how Jeffrey was. Was he disappointed with this qualifying result where he did get on from? He just said... He's still learning, unfortunately, you know, uh, certain things he has to control. And uh, read into that what you will, that he tried to react to uh, the pass, the quick retaliation pass from Tony Cairoli on the opening lap, and he tried to come back when he didn't need to. It was a qualifying race. But both those guys trying to break each other, you know, uh, in, in Red Bull KTM. Cairoli's thinking, right, I need to win this to beat Jeffrey, just to sort of like have that first, that first nail in the coffin. Jeffrey Hurling's thinking likewise. There's no way I'm going to let Cairoli get the better of me. So... Um, you know, and it obviously he made that mistake. He picked himself up, and he was in a situation that he didn't need to be in, battling with people when he didn't need to be. So, uh, and he's in that same situation now. It's, um, I mean, you can just see from from the body language and the behaviour of the bikes that these guys are still pushing. I mean, there's still 70 minutes to go in this race. Why not? But then I think they're being a little bit more respectful of the track compared yeah. to the first moto. I mean, obviously it's getting bumpier, it's getting slightly more technical harder to handle but it's still so far so wide it's a, it's a weird kind of like paradox really of being able to push hard but then also just you know be careful not to to spin it out sketchy is kind of like the word the riders been using when they've been trying to describe finding that grip and using the grip well tony Cairoli so far has yet to win around here he's had two seconds uh on his uh uh, first visit that got him third overall. He had two seconds in 2016 that brought him second overall. He won moto number one. He's currently leading race two here. Um, never won in Argentina because obviously we've only been coming back here since 2015. So uh, this will be another little uh, sort of feather in the cap or uh, another sort of mark on the chalkboard. Little milestone. Yeah, milestone. It's, um, it's also going to be an exact replica of uh, last year when he won his ninth world title. So, you know, he won the Italian Championship, all the pre-season races that he contested coming into the season and then when uh, won one in Qatar last year. So, Clay Rowley, he's just looking quite unbeatable at the moment, isn't he? Looking very good. I mean, he's 32 years old, uh, almost one of the oldest riders in the class. Maybe only Kevin Strybos possibly older. Same age, 32 years old as well. But, um, Tony having signed an, another two-year deal of Red Bull KTM ball, so he's going to be haunting uh, MXGP until 2020. It's got all the uh, sort of it's reminiscent, isn't it, or uh, sort of on a parallel with Valentino Rossi. You know, he's there at sort of uh, the Yamaha MotoGP team. They've, uh, you know, they're signing him on a, on a one-year basis, aren't they, at the moment? You know, and uh, oh, to sell a little bit short. And uh, Tony, obviously, is looking at it going, I still feel great. Here's another two years. Thank you very much. Why quit when you can still win races and, and GPs and potentially world championships? I mean, look at Tony Cairoli's career. He's one championship away from equaling Stefan oh. Evers' record of 10. They said that would never be done. Mm. I mean, he's what, on our 83, 82 Grand Prix wins. He's got uh, Evers' record of 101 as well in the gap. And that's some mistakes from uh, Van Horbeek. Right, here is Cairoli. Oh, 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 very nice. brave move. That was, uh, well, Van Horvick never saw that coming. He was probably expecting Hurlings to go around the outside and just break to make sure he got that inside. And I, I expected him to go outside as well. They disappeared out of sight, Adam. 
next thing, Hurlings pops up, leaning all over the Monster Energy Yamaha rider and just muscled his way past the number 89. And he's now going after Clement de Salle in second place. So Hurlings now up into third with 14 and a half minutes plus two laps to go. That could easily have been a big orange and blue <laughs> or ball of metal at the top of the hill, couldn't it? Yeah, twisted metal. Because the problem then is, if they're, if they're crashing going uphill, that's a steep descent coming down. Their bikes would have been in the bottom of the dip. You know, they'd still be chasing them bikes now, you know, to just to get back on in the race. Jeffrey Hurlings, uh, NFG. Yeah. <laughs> the cell, the cell actually wasn't that far away from Cairoli. So five seconds, nearly six, and you can see them all together, these riders. Wow, look at this. Second, third, fourth, and fifth. Split by eight seconds. You can see it on the track. Paul Land further back in sixth. But no. second, third, fourth, and fifth split by uh, less than three seconds. With uh, DeSalle, Hurlings, Van Horbeek, and Fevre. I'm just keeping an eye on this uh, classification with the, the leaderboard at the bottom of the screen there, because I seems after that big crash, unsurprisingly, we lost Jeremy Sewer. I don't think he got back on that Yamaha. Oh, mm. Hurlings coming close to the back markers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And oh. also uh, Van Horbeek having to muscle his way through as well. Blue flags clearly wave there. And Hurlings, it's only a matter of time before he gets to Sal here, isn't it? Yeah. Well, you think, wouldn't you? 13 and a half minutes to go. Looks similar like that time, similar. Both on the mid 44s. Where's Cairoli? 5.8, six seconds. He's already over the, uh, the second of the big jumps into the left at turn 10. But uh, Cairoli would uh, pick up the 1-1 uh, the one -one here at the moment. Depends what's happening with this battle because Hurlings, if he does find his way through, he's yeah, going to go around the outside here and cut back if he's uh, not past him. Watch this. Oh! Yeah, outside Tell you what, DeSalle let him have that, didn't he? Because he knew. He knew that if he uh, went up there, that's high speed from Jeffrey Hurlings around that uh, right hand up. Sure, we'll see uh, both those replays in a minute. Jeffrey Hurlings finding his way past Van Orbeek and DeSalle. Hurlings just commits to that line every lap. He I just commits. If, yeah, if you take that inside line, not only is it kind of bumpier, but also, you, you know, you're just not carrying that momentum. And then the next section is so open and quick going into those little jumps. Got a clear track now as well. He did a 44.9 uh, previously. And uh, Cairoli did 44.7 that time around. And look at that, in traffic, making two passes at 45.4. Uh, so he only lost, you know, three quarters of a second there to Tony Cairo. He's now got clear track, so if he's picking him off three quarters of a second to a second a lap, we've still got time in hand. We had a 13 lapper in motor number, well, 19 lapper in race one, and we're only on lap nine, so we're about the halfway mark. We'll have to see if uh, any shades of our pump are gone by now, Paul. I mean, uh, second place, like you say, clear track. What, what risks will he take to catch up to Cairoli? Because, All. you know, he, well, <laughs> no, but serious, he seriously, I mean, if he wins this moto and wins the Grand Prix, what there a statement go. that is. Exactly, you know, and doing it through traffic, you know, doesn't get any bigger and better than that. And uh, somebody who was born as Ego with his middle name, Jeffy Hurlings, you know, it's, you know, he, he will be walking out of here 10 foot tall because he will go to Valkenswald in two weeks' time saying, this is what I did in Argentina. This is what and I, I actually... I'm already looking forward to Valkenswald because uh, Cairoli is uh, no slouch in the sand. Jeffrey Hurlings is, you know, apart from last year when he finished second overall, never been beaten around there. Yep, um, exactly. Well, let's, let's not forget his record. He actually has been beaten. It was last year where he took his first podium in MXGP. Yeah, yeah. But in MX2, I think he won seven, seven, six years in a row. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's never been off the podium there. Mm. And that's not discounting places like Learop and Assen as well, you know. We were singing Jeremy Van Horbeck's praises, Paul, but maybe just... I wouldn't say he was struggling, but uh, Clement Salle and even Roman Febber looking more likely to take that top five slot away. I just think it's more Jeff, uh, more Jeremy uh, Van Horbeek, the second rider in shot here, the, the lead blue Yamaha rider, probably just, you know, thinking, if I can get some good points on the board here, then I'm going to be happy because, you know, fourth, fifth in the championship, I mean, the two of them are tied at the moment, fourth and fifth. So there's, you know, there's that battle going on. You know, who leads here, uh, who leaves here as the lead Yamaha rider? Right, let's check these out. Here's the, okay, look, they disappear into the dip. Was he gonna pop up on the left? No, he just disappeared and uh, came, just muscled his way around the outside of Van Horbeek to Jeffrey Hurlings. That got him in the third, and this was his pass on DeSalle. Credit to Van Horbeek there, I think he saw it coming. And I mean, so that, too did yeah. DeSalle. Whoa, DeSalle just, just sliding there. He was trying to square the corner off, like you said, but there's no way he had the same speed as Hurlings. All right, what are the gaps? Jeffrey Hurlings, uh, oh, it's gone up. yeah, what 9.1? Yeah, 8.73 8 on the last one, so now it's creeping up. It's a big ask, isn't it? 
got to be a big ask from here. Nine minutes to go. He's not going to lose. Uh, we've got nine laps to go, basically, based on what happened in race one, because there was still plenty of time when they crossed the line with three laps to go. You know, it wasn't a case of, oh, we're going to gain or, or whatever. So with nine laps to go, he needs to be gaining a second a lap on uh, Tony Cairoli, and I don't see that happening at the moment, barring a mistake now from Tony. Yeah. Here's the two months for any Yamahas. Van Horbeek. He's there in fourth place and Fevre in fifth. Which way is this one a go? We've still got nine and a half minutes to find that one out. Just looking at the two uh, Monster Energy Yamahas here, Adam Wheeler and uh, Jeremy Van Horbeek doing his best to keep his teammate and former world champion Roman Fevre behind him. But can he uh, handle this pressure for much longer, do you think? Van Horbeek? Oh, it's tough to say, isn't it? I mean, Fevre, by his own admission, didn't have the, f the best first moto. Seems to have sorted things out and <laughs> been told to concentrate there by uh, Manu, his mechanic. It's, uh, it's a cordial relationship between uh, Van Horbeek and Roman Fevre, we can say. Some spice in the, in the past. Obviously, uh, Van Horbeek was top dog in the team 2014 when Fevre came in in his rookie year and won the World Championship. And that's, uh, that's always going to mess with your teammate's head, isn't it, when something like that happens. So I think, you know, after Fevre's injury problems in 2016, his setup problems last year, you know, these guys pretty, pretty much on a level pegging again now. So probably fighting for that big bone of being the, 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 the top rider, even though Yamaha, that particular team, by, you know, run by Michele Rinaldi is sort of renowned for being... Mm -hmm you know, very impartial with their their technology and their treatment of the riders. Well, the, the, the one thing that will be uh, fair to say is that one of these two is going to be leaving here fourth and one fifth overall in the championship. And uh, we're going straight back to Europe where everybody feels, you know, right back at home, you know, their familiar surroundings. And we've got it for a good few races before the next one, the next flyaway. And there's a couple of curious tracks coming up. Round two in the sand of Augustwa, quite hard, hard base, shallow sand, uh, gets very bumpy. But then moving on towards, you know, red sand's a new track for everybody, even though these guys, you Live know, there in, the winter. Yeah, in East of Spain, they train on it, they know it. Kind of loamy, sandy base again. And then straight to Agada, where we got like hard pack again with a sort of a soft top soil. Yeah. And then the South's kind of broken away from these two. Just keeping an eye on Herlins' uh, progress as well, bottom of the screen and his chart. So the fastest sector one split uh, on this time around by about a full second. And then uh, he lost about three tenths on the second. Seven minutes three to go, he just set yeah. his best lap. Yeah, it's still nine seconds, isn't it? He's not, uh, again, he's running out of laps now. Seven laps to go on the basis that race one was 19 laps. That gap is still nine seconds. So, barring a mistake from Tony Cairoli, which is possible, as we saw Jeremy Siwa at the end of this uh, double apex right, if you like, just where that dips there, where, you know, they turn and change direction. I think that's what caught him out, actually, that hole, just where they change trajectory, sort of like from flat to the base of that hill. And, um, you know, it just goes to show how, uh, despite the, the picturesque nature of it and where we are, just how unforgiving and, and, and brutal. Uh, brutal, yeah. <laughs> This racetrack can be. And you'll see it on the downside of this Monster Energy tabletop as well. The guys are landing and look at the braking bumps already. You know, this is just from a, an MX2, MXGP weekend. In fact, Fevre having a jump long there just to be sure that he missed them. This is the highest part of the track coming up here. Again, extremely steep. A little bit of a G out coming into the, the, the entry and also on, on the base. Yeah, and then you go from light to shade again. You know, you don't see tree roots and you don't see those deep ruts and the, the little edges that, uh, you know, form during the course of the weekend on the exit of that, on the downside of that. But uh, so far, Jeremy Van Horbeek doing a great job keeping Roman Fevre at bay. You know, we've asked the question once or twice for how much longer. Looks like he's just kind of uh, just up the ante a little bit, you know, turned his own little screw there just to keep him back there. And um, either way, I think that Michele and Gio and everybody there at, uh, you know, Ronaldo HQ, a heavy landing there from Fevre, almost this, overshot. This section of the track here, Paul, was pretty deceptive. There's a lot of, like, bumps and holes there. It was mm. interesting watching Tony Cairoli in the first mode. He would just pop the front wheel up and, like, kind of almost wheelie through them, whereas Jeffrey Hurlings was, like, ploughing his way. He's obviously had a lot of confidence in his suspension setup and was just letting the bike kind of absorb all that rough stuff. I mean, it looked far more tiring than the way Tony Cairoli was doing it, but, you know, clear, clearly an effective way for the Dutchman. Yeah, a lot, I mean, you do see a lot of, uh, I mean, you'll see it more so in Valkenswaard in a couple of weeks' time at round two of the FIA Motocross World Championship, the MXGP of Europe. And uh, 
you'll see the guys where the, the braking bumps start to develop towards the end of those straights, particularly uh, Jeffrey Hurlings, Paul's Jonas in MX2. Um, they will wheelie those last three or four bumps and then dip the front end down the last one just to carry that momentum into the corner because braking bumps are there because everyone's slowing down, changing down. The back brake is grabbing the dirt, you know, creating those bumps. And so the bike is very unsettled as you come into those, uh, into those turns. But by keeping the back wheel tracking like that and dipping the front down at the last minute, you know, you've got more control over the front end going into those turns. That's one of the great things you can see at the track side as well. You know, you don't necessarily pick it up on the TV, but there's so much kind of little technique, style and, and tricks you can do just to just to make life easier for yourself and try and win those extra tents. Mm, getting a fox hole shot is one of them. <laughs> <laughs> just uh, looking down the, the order there, Jeremy Seward, 22nd, he's still going. Uh, and those three guys who crashed on the first corner, Julian Lieber now up to 13th, Tommy Sell just behind him in 14th. Uh, Max Anstey in 16th, so the guys are making progress through the pack. Yeah, it's uh, been a tough weekend for some, hasn't it? Like you say, um, you know, Tommy Searle is, is still circulating, isn't he? Um, he's in 14th position at the moment after that first turn crash. Anstey, 16th. A shout out as well in the race order, you'll just see at the bottom of the screen, 5th February, 8th place, Max Nagel, his first race on the, uh, the TM, a brand new 450 as well. Uh, yeah, winner of the inaugural Grand Prix here, yeah, 2015. So uh, Nagel was actually the the second most successful rider at this place. So it was a pretty a pretty good venue for him to get his TM chapter of his career uh, off to a start. I was talking to uh, Marco Ricciardi actually from uh, TM Factory Racing and uh, asking him about the bike because, as I kind of understood it, you know, uh, the, the bike was pretty much ready to go. But I think with Max coming in. He's uh, just pretty much uh, turned everything upside down. And, and I said, you know, is he a good development rider? Is he a good test rider? And they went, oh, my God, he's, like, amazing, you know. And his work ethic and his attention to detail. Um, and they are still very much in the early stages of development. What is a brand-new 450, you know, that TMMX 450 FI yep. uh, fuel-injected machine. So, uh, but Kite Rowley, I mean, how, how good has he been today? How's, how good has he been this weekend, Adam? It's, uh, you just wouldn't believe he's 32. I mean, you know, Jeffrey Hurlings is nine years younger, uh, but the, the same sort of physicality, and like we were talking about earlier, the, the, the smartness, the experience, the, 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 the little ways just to ride a dirt bike pull just makes him so fast. It, it's really interesting to watch, and I've written about it, is Kairoli used to be the original flamboyant wild child, you know, yeah. with a, on a 250 and MX2, he'd be whipping the thing everywhere, whole shots left, right, and center, he just like disappearing, but now he's just like, you know, he, he, he's the picture of economy and, and sort yeah. of style, but he just Whoa. doesn't walk. He's <laughs> he's his <laughs> yeah. Leave, red yeah. card. <laughs> <laughs> but the, te the technique is, is uh, you know, it's superlative. It's, it's amazing. Yeah. You said, you know, that sort of exuberance, you know, when he, in his 250 days, he was very uh, Alessandro Puzar-esque, wasn't he? Elbows out and just moving all over the place. You know, he almost had a nervous disposition, you know. It's almost uh, unheard of, but... As he's moved to the bigger bike, he's calmed that right down. And it's almost like a footballer, isn't it? You know, like you get a, a midfield player or a striker that's always goal hanging and always sprinting, and all of a sudden they go, actually, you know, if I do this, my career is going to be very, very short. So it's how you control that. Yeah, you, you, know, something else. Yeah, you, yeah. you prolong it. Take the points when you can, take the wins when you can, you know, and settle for those points, uh, you know, when you need to. And that's exactly how he's, you know, you know he was. He wasn't dominant last year, was he, in terms of like race wins and all the rest of it, but he scored the most points than anybody. He's the best championship builder there is. I yeah. mean, the, the numbers testify, but also just the, the way he does it. I mean, there's, there's no panic, there's no stress, there's, there's no worry. You, you know, if he's fourth one week, he's fourth. If he, and then he tries to fight back and always managing the point situation in the standings. Yeah. And, you know, Clement de Salle has been chasing him for 10 years. I mean, it's exactly 10 years since this guy on the screen won in the Premier class. He's the second most successful rider in this class currently on the track. And just injuries and, and not being able to have the same kind of approach to a championship season has been the difference between Clement and, and Tony winning nine titles. Actually, just looking at, uh, you know, last year, um, Cairoli topped every list apart from uh, heat wins. So... Um, Pole positions, he had six compared to Hurling's five. He led 186 laps to the 162 of Tim Guy, so that was like nearly 29%. Uh, he had nine race wins compared to the 12 of Jeffrey Hurling. So like we say, didn't win all the races or didn't win the most races. Um, but uh, Grand Prix wins, he had six apiece with Jeffrey. So, uh, you know, them's the stats.
So three laps to go, and that gap has come down to 4.051 seconds. Cairoli's last lap that time around, a 45.412. Hurlings, his best lap of the race, a 43.985. And uh, Adam Wheeler, are we in for... Uh, we said he needed to be doing a second a lap on Cairoli to get what was a nine-second gap with nine laps to go, effectively. We've got three laps to go, and that gap is only four seconds, so is there still time left? Can't well, afford to switch off, can he? No, on the on the second turn at the top of the pitch there, we saw Cairo just making what seemed to be a, a mistake to slide into that berm. I mean, that, that second turn, that long right turn where Jeremy Silver crashed ball must be one of the most difficult on this racetrack. It's so high speed and so gnarly and treacherous. Well, Jeffries has set his best lap with three to go. I mean, I know if he's not going to win this race, that'll be one of the things he takes encouragement from. You know, he said it in the past, you know, he likes to... Uh, even his training method has been about, you know, doing a, a moto in the sand and then trying to set his best. That's not four time. seconds. That is not four seconds. I think we're game on here, folks. Uh, closing stages, two and a bit laps to go. I think uh, Jeffrey Hurt, there's the gap. Two. That's not even two seconds, is it? He cannot afford to switch off, and I don't think he's aware of the danger. You know, he's going to sort of come over the line any moment now, and the mechanics are going to be hanging out the board two and throwing markers. down the hammer, yeah. Oh, it's four, uh, four back markers ahead. Well, the back, uh, oh, was, nervous look. There's the look. He was just getting the pit board saying he had six seconds advantage. Use lappers. Look, there you go. For Hurlings. That was a four-second advantage. The gap now as they hit the line for the 17th time has been halved. It's 2.1 seconds. And there's Kai Rowley going around the outside of Graham Irwin and Tano Leok. Uh, two back markers in this race. And they are in 19th and 20th place respectively. And Jeffrey Hurlings will be next. Hurlings being told to use the lappers to his advantage on the pit ball there, Paul, but I think uh, Kai Rowley's just done that. And the irony here would be if Kai Rowley gets caught behind the back markers and that plays into the hands of Jeffrey Hurlings, because that was the downfall with the lap to go, wasn't it? Hurlings got caught behind the lappers, and here we go again. One of those lappers, Tano Leo, development rider of Husqvarna, and also Graham Irwin there, just on the uh, Hitachi KTM. Yeah. Oh, fans getting animated now as they hit the waves for the uh, penultimate time. I wonder if Cairoli just put in too much at the uh, start of the race and has just blown himself out. I know it's difficult to imagine, but, uh, you know, a couple of mistakes that we've not seen maybe that have reduced his lap times. And trying to turn it up when you're already spent is a very, very difficult thing to, to do and uh, something to maintain. But and Hurlings never gives up. Never gives up. You know, he's an animal. He's an absolute machine. And, you know, if we see this, as we said, uh, probably five or six or seven laps ago, you know, what statement would that be to, uh, for Jeffrey Hurlings to take it with a second race win and to do it with a lap to go? And Tony just going from the inside, drifting out to the outside there. This is... Uh, oh, <laughs> Hurlings is on fire. Yeah, there's been a few the of those. Oh, and gets caught behind another back marker, Jose Boutron, who doesn't know that Cairoli is there. And Jeffrey Hurlings, oh, he's right there. He's oh. ready to pounce. Last Game lap. on. We are no longer 2.1 seconds. We don't need a clock. It's less than a second. It's six tenths. Oh, and he's going for the jugular. He's charging down the inside. He runs him wide. Oh. He goes wide. Wow. And these two are going to end up in a... In a, oh, in a scrap. They're still <laughs> going. Watch, watch Hurlings around the outside. And he's got caught behind the back marker. Kai Rowley can't afford to rely. Oh, oh. Back end out. Oh. Opposite scrubbing. And Hurlings leads for the first time, does he? He's going to come in out. He's going to square him off. No, he thinks... Oh, he goes around the outside. Kai Rowley looking. He's almost helpless. And a mistake there from the nine-time champ. What a comeback ride for Jeffrey Hurlings. It ain't over Kai it's going over. It. Kai Rowley's going for the waves. Oh, oh. I tell you what. This is the race that we wanted all of last year. We got it on occasions in Ottaviano and at Lommel in Belgium. Kai Rowley's going to square off. He'll go straight. No, he won't. Oh, out of the seat there. Going to go to the outside here, is he? No. Following him line for line. Hurlings has just got the hammer down. And what a performance from Jeffrey Hurlings. This one has gone right the way down to the checkered flag. It's still not over. We talked about the psychological advantage of winning here, Paul. I mean, this is going to be a big, big win ahead of his home Grand Prix as well for round two. I did not expect this. When he was nine seconds down with nine laps to go, and he wasn't for the first two or three laps of that uh, making any kind of inroads, all of a sudden there was a mistake from Kai Rowley that uh, allowed Hurlings in. And uh, he's just run out of time now, Kai Rowley, on this final lap. There's no way back. Jeffrey Hurlings, wow, I tell, tell you what. Lisa is going to need an even bigger step ladder to talk to him uh, in the post-race interview because he's going to be even taller than Jessica Konas. Hurlings takes the win and he does it in 
emphatic style. What a win, the, probably the biggest win of his career, Adam Wheeler. I'm a little bit lost for words, to be honest, Paul. You couldn't have expected that at all. Look so at the KTM. KTM, yeah. Wow. Yes. <laughs> that says it all. Wow. Is that the turning of the tide right there? What we were saying about Kai Rodi and championships, Paul, I mean, he, he took that second place, last place, you know, halfway around that last lap, and I think it's, uh, it's the first act we're going to see in this long saga. Wow. What a end to a fantastic Grand Prix. Hurling set the fastest lap of the race on the final lap. <laughs> How many times have we said that before? Final lap, fastest lap of the race, Jeffrey Hurlings. Just absolutely decimated. This will be interesting. Uh, Lisa Leyland is with Jeffrey Hurlings. Jeffrey Hurlings, a big win for you. You did not give up. And some risky moves there to get the overall. It was tight, man. I mean, uh, you know, I'm blessed for, for the KTM. I did a great job. And, you know, I had a good start, but because I crashed yesterday, you know, they cleaned me a bit out on the first turn. but. You know, I was sick all week, even hearing on my voice. And yesterday, uh, I was struggling a bit with myself. But then today, to come back that strong is unbelievable. You know, I had a, like I said, I had a good start. It pushed me wide. And on this track, the pass was pretty tough. It was high speed. And, and then, uh, you know, to come back from that far is amazing. And, you know, I never give up. You know, that's what my mama always teaches me to never give up. And, man, I'm so blessed to, uh, for this win. You know, I'm very thankful. Worked all winter. Did everything I possibly could to get here. And, uh, that it pays out with victory, then it's amazing, you know. Success is all I got. Fantastic win. Thanks, Jeffrey. Jeffrey Hurlings, then, your overall winner here. And uh, as he goes into round two at the MXGP of Europe at the Netherlands in two weeks' time, he's already 15 places better than he was at the same, st same stage of the championship last year, Adam Wheeler. We can't speak about any kind of conditions, Paul. I mean, things can easily change around, but I would like to see the roles reversed. I'd like to see if Tony Coyrody can hunt down, you know, a nine-second gap in nine-second laps. But, you know, is, is that how, how is this dynamic going to work out during the year? It's, it's, a, it's a great story so far, and this is just the first one. And he, you can hear the sickness in his voice. I, did I detected it on uh, Friday when I spoke to him. But uh, here's the, uh, the race results. Fantastic result for uh, Jeffrey Hurlings and Tony Cairoli coming out in second position. Uh, to Sal, Van Horvick, Fevra, Paul Ant, Simpson, Nagel, Bob Rechef and Lupino, your top ten. So Jeffrey Hurlings then wins race two, and with it, he takes the overall. He shares the points with uh, Tony Cairoli, and the win for Tony Cairoli here in Argentina goes on for another year at least. He still has yet to win here. Jeffrey Hurlings now two-time winner here, having won in MX2 in 2016, and now here in MXGP in 2018. So, uh, wow. Did not expect that, you know, for all of the... Uh, the bravado and everything that uh, Jeffrey Hurlings is all about. You know, he definitely laid it on the line there. And once he got half a sniff, well, there was no turning back, was there? He just threw it all in there. And you could hear the, a little bit of uh, emotion, a little bit of wobble in his voice at the end in that interview with Lisa. And um, But maybe that was because of the sickness. Maybe because there's absolutely nothing left in the tank. Who knows? But uh, he put it there when he needed to. And he came over the line 2.051 seconds clear of Tony Cairoli to stand on the top step of the podium. So uh, as we go to the second round of the championship in two weeks' time, Jeffrey Hurlings will head to the Netherlands in the MXGP of Europe with the championship leader's red plate on the front of that KTM 450 machine. So uh, the top five this weekend, of course, uh, Jeffrey Hurlings, Tony Cairoli, Clement de Salle. He'll be on the podium for Monster Energy Kawasaki. So only seven points between uh, him and the two that are sharing the points. And then we've got uh, Van Horbeek and Fevre. So uh, Van Horbeek leading the Yamaha Brigade. But uh, let's see the Fox Hotshot here in uh, race two. And I think it might have been... Tony Cairoli, let's have a look because we were uh, distracted with what was happening behind. Only just, but Tony Cairoli, Fox hole shot number two. He's pleased with that, and to be honest, he's probably quite pleased that uh, he's sharing a point, so it's all square for the two Red Bull KTM factory riders as we head to round two. 
Only one person has scored whole shots in, a, in a MXGP in 2018. Tony Kai Rowley has scored both of them. Let's get ready for the podium then here. The MXGP of Patagonia, Argentina. What another successful event. The, uh, the CAMOD, the uh, Argentine Federation, have run here in conjunction with uh, MXGP and Youthstream, of course. And uh, beautiful racetrack, choppy as and gnarly as by the end of the weekend. But uh, a real physical challenge and a physical test to all the riders. Clement de Salle will step on the third step of the podium, though, for Monster Energy Kawasaki Racing Team. He'll be pleased with that. Two third place finishes. Good, solid day for the MX Panda. Second overall, Antonio Cairoli, Red Bull KTM Factory Racing. He was victorious in moto number one. He had to settle for second in moto number two. He was caught unawares by his teammate who snatched the victory on the final lap. And uh, that man is here, Jeffrey Hurlings. Second in race one. He didn't think he was going to have the legs to close down on uh, Tony Cairoli. Maybe the pit board that said he was six seconds clear uh, on a previous lap, suggested that he was just about to relax and take his foot off the gas. Maybe Kai Rowley can tell us that in his uh, post-race interview. But uh, for sure, he was caught unawares and couldn't do anything about it. Jeffrey Hurlings, victorious here in Patagonia. Dirk Grubel stands on the uh, podium as well. And of course, he operates out of... Uh, Hurling's side, the, uh, what they call the Austrian side of the tent, because uh, Kai Rowley is the Italian uh, team. Third overall, Clement de Sal takes his uh, piece of silverware from Claudio Massetti, coordinator of tourism, Federal Council. Of course, as always, when we come to any Grand Prix, but, uh, you know, especially when we come to these places here in, in South America and all of our flyaways, uh, all of the locals uh, that we have on board, the mayors and all the local councils, the dignitaries, you know, we appreciate that they support MXGP the way that they do. Second overall, Tony Cairoli, Mitch Covington there, the VP of Sports Marketing at Monster Energy, on hand to deliver the trophy to uh, Mr. Cairoli. But uh, it's another win in the bag for uh, Jeffrey Hurlings. He won six in MXGP last year. This will be his seventh win for uh, as, uh, as an MXGP rider for Jeffrey Hurlings. Red Bull KTM Factor Racing, he will hold that winner's trophy aloft. And uh, he now shares uh, the most Argentine wins with uh, Tim Geiser, two apiece. Marissa Bocorazzo, Ministry of Tourism, province of Neuken. Thank you very much for you and your team for allowing us to come back here for another year. <laughs> Manufacturer's Trophy going to KTM this weekend. Of course, Dirk Grubel will gladly accept from uh, Roberto Kakut, the member of Congress. And as far as uh, manufacturer wins now, that will be five for KTM. They now leapfrog Honda, who had four coming into this one. And uh, Tony Skillington handing the red plate to Jeffrey Hurlings. He leaves Patagonia, Argentina as a championship leader. He will head to his home Grand Prix at Valkenswald in two weeks' time as a championship leader. Well, you can bet there'll be a turnout and a half of uh, loyal fans getting ready to shout on the bullet at that event. And I can't wait. National Anthem time for Jeffrey Hurlings and his Dutch fans. Wayne Banks, the uh, Australian mechanic of Jeffrey Hurlings there with his head bowed. Probably can't believe what's just happened. National anthem, though, for Austria. KTM winning manufacturer here in Argentina.
Your top three here at the MXGP of Patagonia, Argentina. Red Bull KTM Factory Racing 1-2, but it's Jeffrey Hurlings who outshines his teammate Tony Cairoli for the top step and the championship lead as we head to round two in uh, Balkans Wide in two weeks' time. And the Monster Energy Kawasaki of uh, Clement de Salle running out the third step of the podium with two third-place finishes. And uh, the championship has only just started. That's a good point. Here's some best moments, and we'll talk to our top three, the other side of this, with Lisa Leyland. Oh, that'll be an interesting interview, won't it, with all three of them. Here's Lisa. Jeffrey Hurlings, congratulations. It was like two different Jeffreys in that second moto. At the start, you were shaking your arm up. You didn't seem very comfortable. But you're like a machine at the end there, catching out your teammate. Oh, man, I've been watching each gallery what I put in my mouth for the last month just to be up there where to start. And, you know, I did everything I could, I possibly could, you know, to, to be the best I am right now. And uh, you see hard work paid off, but I never could do it at Red Bull KTM Racing Team. And I uh, want to thank my complete crew, especially Pitt. You know, Pitt always believed in me and the uh, entire crew for working their ass off for me. And uh, all my sponsors, you know, thank you for sticking behind me, my family, everyone at home for supporting me now. It's, uh, it's good. So really appreciate it. You know, I've been... We've been really working hard during the winter to get better out of the gate and it's been shown I did. So uh, we tried to be even better on that and I feel the riding is good already. We still try to improve and uh, it's going to be a long year. Battles with Tony like this, it's uh, pretty impressive. So uh, it's going to be a long 18 more rounds. But uh, once again, thank you everybody for supporting me and can't wait for Valkenswart next race up. Great job, thank you. Second overall today we have Tony Cairoli. Uh, Tony, bittersweet weekend, two fox hole shots, a moto win, but just caught out there at the end. Yeah, you know, it's uh, this is racing and uh, Jeffrey was faster in the end of the, uh, on the second moto. I tried to hold, to hold on, but uh, I, I, miss it. I was making a few mistakes and he could come uh, closer. Then uh, it, was, uh, it was better than the end of the moto, that's for sure, that everybody see it. But uh, I'm happy overall because, uh, you know, we, uh, this track for me was always difficult to make it to the podium. And this time we almost uh, close, we were close to the win. So uh, we, we take the positive out of this, but for sure... Uh, we had a very, very high level and uh, we were on the limit all the time. So this is good for the motocross. It's, uh, it's very nice and uh, hopefully we can have more races like this. And uh, congratulations to Jeff. Great weekend for you. Thank you. Third overall today, we have Clement de Salle. Clement, two solid, sensible motos for you. Great start to your season and a good job breaking free from those Yamahas. Yeah, it's true, you know, I feel great and it's a strong, uh, strong race. Uh, yeah, but you know, the two guys in front are really fast, I saw that, but uh, yeah, I will keep working and, and, and uh, try to, to fight for some victory and then uh, good standing in the championship. And uh, yeah, I'm really happy that, you know, my, my work during the winter uh, it was good and it's all time good to see in first race where we are. And, and yeah, I changed a couple of stuff uh, compared to last year. And uh, yeah, it's good, it's good, positive weekend and uh, say hi to uh, at home to my family and my girls. Uh -huh. Congratulations, thanks, come on. So your top three then. Starting in third position, Clement de Salle, Monster Energy Kawasaki. Two solid rides on the board for him this weekend. But as he said, the two guys ahead of him were faster. He'll continue to go to work. Tony Cairoli, well, his wait for a win in Argentina continues. But a win in the race and a second in moto number two meant that he was second overall, but what a performance from Jeffrey Hurlings in that final moto. He came from nine seconds back once he got into that second place and he just pushed and pushed and pushed and that was it. So Jeffrey Hurlings will go to the next round of MXGP, the MXGP of Europe at the Valkenswad circuit in the Netherlands with the championship leader's red plate on the front of that KTM 450SXF. So uh, we'll see you all there in two weeks' time. My name's Paul Mellon. Thanks to Adam Wheeler. We'll see you then. Bye for now.